I'm James Douglas, and I work at the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, and I'm going to talk about linked data and how we can discover knowledge buried in um, very simple facts or statements. Uh, before I jump into this, how many uh, in this audience are familiar with Semantic Web? OK, so about half. Cool. So we're going to be building on a lot of uh, Semantic Web type uh, topics. Um, unfortunately, in the next uh, 15 or so minutes, we won't be able to dive too deeply into them, but uh, feel free to grab me afterward and, and I can wax uh, forever about them. Uh, so the approach that we're going to follow for uh, our adventure in knowledge discovery is we want to look at uh, uh, ways that we can take databases of very simple facts uh, or statements uh, and explore those facts and connect them in different ways, um, basically discover relationships between them. Uh, and then use all that information, put it together, and build up more of a complex web of understanding about some topic that we happen to be interested in. Uh, so for example, uh, consider these three individual facts uh, about Richard Feynman. So one fact says Richard Feynman was born in Queens. And a separate fact says Queens is a borough of New York City. And another fact says that uh, New York City is in the United States. Uh, and actually, I guess it would be more fair to call these statements uh, because I'm providing no proof that these are facts. Um, but I will use the two interchangeably. Please pardon uh, the semantic uh, indistinction. So anyway, we have three facts here. And uh, since these are simple, it's very easy to look at these and see that there's a connection. Um, and so we can do that. We can start to connect these things together. So, Knowing that Queens is a borough in New York City and knowing that New York City is in the United States, we can infer that, well, Queens is probably in the United States. Uh, so there's, uh, there's inherent knowledge behind these two facts that wasn't necessarily uh, encoded explicitly in uh, their uh, individual content. Um, and then from there, we can take the next step and synthesize an even bigger picture. So we, we stated in our, one of our facts that Richard Feynman was born in Queens. And in our previous slide, we inferred that Queens is in the United States. So again, we can make a connection and uh, infer that uh, Richard Feynman was born in the United States. And even more, we can connect all of this information and say uh, more complexly that Richard Feynman was born in Queens, which is a borough of New York City, uh, which is in the United States. Um, and so that's a very simple example. Uh, in, the, in practice, in the sort of broader uh, um, ecosystem, the way to get there, uh, at least what I'm going to be talking about, is by building on the foundations of Semantic Web. Uh, and for those of you who are familiar, Semantic Web is, uh, is really just the web that we all know and use every day, but with a little bit more intention behind structuring the information so that it's understandable uh, more by machines than, um, than just by people. So if you think about uh, a web page having a link to another web page, then that's indicating some type of relationship between them. And that's something that's very easy for people to understand. Oh, I go to Google and I search for Feynman and I get a link to a Wikipedia article. So I understand that I can follow that link uh, and that there's a, some type of relationship between that search engine and that article. Um, but encoding that into uh, the underlying um, information uh, actually becomes very useful for uh, putting it into structures that machines understand. Uh, and so this semantic web is not just a, a um, uh, theoretical concept. It's, it's actually all over the place, uh, or at least aspects of it uh, you can find all over the place. So there are databases that are specifically geared toward uh, putting semantics around information. And those are things like Wikibase, uh, Wikidata, which uses Wikibase, um, DBpedia, Freebase, and on and on. And there are more uh, like this. Uh, Data.gov is one that the, uh, that the US government maintains, music brains, and, and so forth. And then the actual web, actually. Uh, a given web page uh, is written in HTML generally. So there's actually quite a lot of structure behind that that we maybe don't think about because our browsers are interpreting that structure to render the page. Can you turn me down just a little bit on the PA? Awesome, thanks. Uh, so for example, consider uh, just a regular plain old HTML list. Uh, this lets us take a, an abstract idea, like a list of things, which we might express as a flat string, um, electrons, protons, and neutrons, and allows us to put structure that, in this case, a web browser would understand. So rather than just three, uh, or, or rather than just some sort of mm, structure this piece of data, this string, 
uh, we can tell the browser, hey, there's this list. It happens to be an unordered list. Uh, and it has three distinct elements. So the browser doesn't know what an electron is, but it knows that electrons is uh, an element in this three item list. And that's really all we're talking about when we say structure. Uh, that's not quite the structure that we'll use for the rest of this talk. Um, we're going to uh, be basing everything on what's called triples. Uh, and triples are really just a way to break down a simple statement, uh, such as an English sentence like Richard Feynman plays the bongo drum, into three parts that we can uh, individually tag and identify. Uh, those parts are the subject, predicate, and object of a statement. So in this case, uh, subject is Richard Feynman. Um, he's uh, the main um, sort of noun of this sentence. And then object is the thing that he's being related to, so that's uh, bongo drum. Um, and then the relation between, in this statement, the relation between Feynman and bongo drum is this predicate plays the. Uh, so with these three pieces of information, we can, re we can see that there's uh, kind of like our hyperlink example before, there's this relation between these two entities, uh, and we can understand what that relation is. Uh, so in Semantic Web, there's uh, the Resource Description Framework, or RDF, um, which is this enormous ecosystem of uh, standards, which you will find you drown quickly in once you start uncovering these things. Um, but Within those standards are a way to uh, write this same kind of triple in a, st a standardized way that tools built on these standards can understand. So uh, in RDF, uh, these three uh, URIs are the exact same sentence that we just said in English. So Richard Feynman plays the bongo drum. Uh, that says Richard Feynman plays the bongo drum, but in RDF. And so what it says is there's a subject, which is this uh, long URI, which maps somewhere in some database. In this case, it's Wikidata. Uh, to an entity, which is Richard Feynman. Uh, and then similarly, we have the relation, which maps to some entity in a database, and Bongo Drum, which uh, has an ID uh, and maps to another entity in the database. Uh, and so this is really nice in terms of being able to unambiguously identify and reference information, uh, at, at least if you're a computer. But as a person, no one's going to look at that and read any English sentence. Uh, you're going to have to pull up a database and do a bunch of querying to sort of infer what it means. So triples, uh, while they're powerful, they have some problems. Um, they're, because they only capture statements, uh, a given triple, if, if you can dig underneath the covers and sort of get to the entities and predicates, uh, and objects that are uh, implicated, it's very easy to understand what a statement says. But as I said, we're people, we're not computers, so looking at all these URIs is basically meaningless. So it, it actually makes this thing kind of unapproachable to uh, most people. Not only that, but in RDF, there's an obscene amount of standards. Um, they're all very interesting and really cool and have uh, very uh, useful specifics. Um, but as I say, it, it makes it kind of unapproachable if you say, hey, I want to learn semantic web, or I want to build a tool that uses RDF. Then suddenly you have to say, OK, I'm going to read the RDF spec. And then the RDF spec forks into all these other specs, and then you end up in this nightmare of, of trying to learn specs until your eyes bleed, and then you give up. Or at least that's what I did. And <laughs> so as evidenced by the fact that this doesn't even fit on a slide, uh, here's sort of a hypothetical question. Uh, what does this say? Uh, so we're actually looking at four uh, RDF statements, four triples, and these are real triples. They, this actually says something, um, but as you can tell, you, you can't read it. Um, and it turns out this says that Richard Feynman works for Cornell. So what's the deal? Why, why is such a simple idea, Richard Feynman working for Cornell, so noisy? Well, it comes back to statements. Statements are inherently simple, uh, and it's, it's difficult to... Um, it's difficult to use them in a way that expresses complex information without having kind of a combinatorial explosion of statements. Um, and we'll see uh, a little bit more um, hands-on what I mean. So there are some ways of, of alleviating some of this. Uh, Turtle is yet another standard uh, that lets us uh, define these aliases so we can pull out common prefixes, uh, like URI prefixes in this case. Uh, but it doesn't get us around the readability problem. I, I mean, yeah, there's less noise on the page, but I still don't know that that says anything about Richard Feynman. 
Uh, and then Sparkle helps as well. Sparkle is yet another standard. Uh, in this case, it's a, a language for uh, performing queries on RDF stores. So this query would give us, if we ran this on some RDF store that had the right data, this query would give us the answer uh, to where Richard Feynman works. And in the interest of time, I won't dive too deeply into this, but we have four lines here, uh, and these will correspond to those four triples that we had. Basically, this query will cause those four uh, statements to be implicated in our search, and then we'll connect uh, one end of our search, which is Feynman, to the other end of our search, which is where he worked. And then one more thing that Sparkle uh, gives us is the ability to collapse um, this sort of path traversal uh, into a much cleaner format. But again, this is like really daunting. Uh, this is something that I continue, even though I work with this every day, this is something that I have to look up all the time uh, and remind myself, oh, what was that syntax? What was the prefix, uh, et cetera? Uh, so f the, the last little bit uh, that I, tried to do to clean this up, and again, it doesn't solve the problem completely, but helps a, a little bit, is to take Sparkle and extend it uh, in a way that makes uh, the language more specific to my particular domain. So for example, if, if I create a namespace and then put in a whole bunch of definitions that I'm likely to use, like Feynman, uh, I work, I do searches with Feynman a lot, so I want that to be a specific keyword in my namespace, and, and so on, then we can start to make queries that are a little bit more readable. So in this case, we want to know who's the employer uh, of the subject Feynman. So now we, we actually have an English uh, string that we can read. Uh, and then the path from Feynman to that employer goes through these two properties, uh, where the first property is who's his employer, and the second property is from that abstract entity that's identified by some really long URI, what is another statement that indicates some English label uh, identifying that. So I have a couple of example queries, and I uh, unfortunately we started late, so I, I can't uh, dive too much into these, but uh, we can start to ask things uh, with Sparkle, uh, and in this case, this is a query that says, um, what happened in, this, uh, in history on this day? Um, and if, if, you're, uh, if you're used to reading Sparkle, you might find some interesting um, oversights, perhaps, in, uh, in the way this is written. Um, specifically, uh, we're, we're doing some regex matching on uh, date values, which is kind of a drag because Sparkle actually provides lots of interesting date functions. And this, uh, this is actually a hint that our data might not be as well labeled or our ontology might not be as complete as we want, and that's actually the case. Um, so this is already way out of date. Uh, I, I just wrote this a few days ago, but we have been working very hard on uh, improving our RDF representation of uh, Wikidata. So uh, already today, we wouldn't have to use this regex and substring matching. And so if we run this query on Wikidata, we get a whole bunch of results. Uh, here's a small sample. Um, you'll also notice that I have the names of entities and I have dates, but I don't have any information about what the event itself was. So for example, Mexican-American War did something uh, in 1846. Um, maybe it started in, in uh, April 4th, uh, sorry, April 24th, 1846, maybe it ended, we don't really know. And again, that comes back to how we structure our query, how much information is even available for us to ask, uh, and so forth. And as I said before, even this is out of date, uh, and we could find out exactly what happened related to the Mexican-American War. Uh, oh, uh, looks like I'm out of time. So let me just jump through the last two slides. Um, this is the one I'm most excited about uh, for this talk. Um, so we, when we started, we talked about connecting Feynman to an employer or connecting uh, Feynman to being born in the US through these multiple levels of indirection. Uh, and this is kind of that um, exploded to a, a more impressive level. So this says, uh, starting from Richard Feynman, traverse our graph of knowledge to find out uh, what his field was, uh, who, uh, I'm sorry, who he was employed by, um, who other people uh, were that were also employed by that employer, what fields they studied, and then tell me, uh, bring that all together and tell me who worked with Richard Feynman and what were their fields of study. And again, running this on Wikidata, we get some results, and I'm just gonna fly through these. Um, so the, the point of all of this is that uh, the Semantic Web is uh, super daunting and uh, there's a lot to learn, 
but there, I think it's worth the trouble. I think there's um, being able to uh, traverse these sort of graphs of, of data, not really graphs of knowledge, and then build up knowledge from synthesizing those um, pieces of information is super powerful. We can learn things we didn't, we didn't anticipate. We can discover relevances between things that we didn't know were there, like, oh, Richard Feynman is connected to Oppenheimer. I, maybe I didn't know that. That's cool. Um, and now I'm over, so until they pull me off with a hook, uh, you can get involved in this. Um, if you want to just uh, Im improve the data that's available, you can go to Wikidata, uh, and it's, it's built on Wikipedia. Uh, sorry, it's built on MediaWiki, which powers Wikipedia, and it also feeds um, Wikipedia. Uh, the query service that we're building uh, is built on BlazeGraph, so there are some URLs for those two. Um, and then there's lots of further reading, uh, which I'll skip over. And Thank you very much. Um, I think since I'm over, um, I'll take questions sort of uh, out of band and let the next presenter set up. <laughs> Unless you let me stand up here and run my mouth more. I was told to warn you, so I warned you, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> Warning acknowledged. Any questions? Mm -hmm. uh, those queries then need to be already uh, as a template. How, how do you map those questions to those queries? The question is how do I take this question that I want to ask and come up with this ridiculous looking Sparkle query? Uh, and there, there's this whole um, pattern of exploration of a graph. So all of this information is stored in basically a graph database. And the way I came up with this query was not from a template. Uh, I started from a known point. I started from Feynman. And then I essentially asked the graph, what do I know about him? So show me all of the links around Richard Feynman. So it's like going to a web page and just looking at all the hyperlinks and clicking on them all and seeing what comes back and th pruning the ones that you don't care about. So here in, in the first line I say, hey, who was Richard Feynman employed by? And whoever that was, uh, who else was employed by that employer? Uh, and of, of those people, what were they occupied as? And so uh, I basically just sort of explore this graph. Is this all manual task, or do you analyze that question and extract its importance? Oh, it's, it's all manual. So there's no, uh, um, we don't have yet any natural language processing on that question to infer this query. This is all strictly manual. The Wikidata query service is built on BlazeGraph. Yeah, so BlazeGraph is a triple store and graph database. And uh, it may not be related to the query that you want to compare with some other graph So there are a lot of uh, databases that we looked at uh, when we were researching this, and, and we went through basically a huge trade study to to compare the pros and cons. In our case, we had specific requirements, like we wanted uh, cross-domain failover, we wanted certain levels of availability, we knew we had certain data sizes that we needed to deal with, and so on. So with all of those criteria, we ended up, actually we ended up on another one called Titan, um, who was then acquired and their whole team was effectively dissolved. So we went back to the drawing board and, and came back to BlazeGraph. Um, and so far it's been working pretty well. Um, if you go to the, actually if you go to blazegraph.com, uh, they have a press release and, and they mention us and, and talk about all of the other uh, databases that didn't get selected. They're all really good, um, it's just this one happened to be the best for our particular needs. Going to a natural language um, would be super awesome, um, but it's way above my area of expertise. Uh, I think I have to get off now. So um, I'll, I'll be around. Feel free to grab me. Thanks. <laughs>